Hey guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We release a new video every day at four o'clock. So thank you for watching, enjoy. We're asking five questions of Don Bucalo today. These are cruise bloggers, Don and Heidi. They've spent more than 180 days at sea, eatsleepcruise.com. DB, it's good to meet you, ma'am. Good to meet you, thanks for having me on. Who in their right mind would be planning a cruise now? Oh, you're looking at one of them. I think, you know, we're waiting, to, <laughs> we're waiting to see when we came back on a cruise, of course, make sure it's healthy and safe. But I think there are plenty of people actually looking to cruise when the cruise lines are ready to sail. And again, it's safe to have people back out to sea. Wasn't the cruise line fighting an uphill public relations uh, annoyance, I would call it already? because it's very difficult to get people on a ship. And as you and I both know, once they get on one, they tend to come back time and time again. How, is the, how are these lines gonna survive now? Well, I think you're right. I mean, first time cruisers, once they get on a ship, which is a struggle to begin with, then they fall in love with it. And that's what happened to us. We did our first cruise together. And then we've just been cruising ever since, over 30 voyages together. But I think, there's a couple of things that cruise lines can do. First, they, they can improve some of the health procedures and protocols that they already have in place. I already think they're pretty safe, but they can do even more to, rest, to have people's confidence that they are safe forms of travel. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is going to be first securing people, letting them know what they're going to do from you know, checking temperatures or making sure that everyone is healthy um, through questionnaires or other protocols and then sanitation on the ships. But price is gonna be the big thing. I think what they're gonna to need to do is lower the prices in the beginning, at least the cruise fares themselves, sure. and just get people back on board. And then through social media and through other means, people will see, okay, it, it's safe to go back on a cruise. I feel comfortable. It's an experience I expect it to be. And then slowly but surely, people will start booking more and more cruises. And then we'll get back to, you know, it'll take time, but we'll get back to where we were before with ships sailing at full capacity and then sailing in regions all over the world. I'm glad you mentioned that word capacity because it's worth noting that cruise lines are going to be faced much like the airlines. Are they going to deal with capacity and their maximum capacity being at maybe 60%, 70%, 50% and call it full? Is that what they're going to have to do to keep the number of people down on that ship just for a public confidence move? I think so. We have no insider track, right? We're just going with our own experience. But yeah, if you look at what they're doing for restaurants or what other entertainment venues like Disney World or some of the other places are saying, I think limiting capacity to 25 to 50%, depending on where you are, that's what a lot of states are saying for like restaurants, for example. I think that's what they're going to have to do at first, right? And however they spread that out, whether they only have balcony and maybe ocean view rooms available, and no insides, or they space out every other room. How, however they organize it on there structurally, I do think they're gonna have to have that reduced capacity. And then they're gonna have to put other measures in place in dining venues or entertainment venues to also ensure proper social distancing. And whether that means going to more of a reservation system or maybe having fewer acts or shows, but just more show times so they can spread out the crowds, I think they're gonna to have to do some of that and then maybe they can get back to 50%, 75, et cetera, once, once this has passed us and we're kind of over, over the hump. If you start to deconstruct what cruising really is about, which is about the places and the ships themselves, mm -hmm. it could be perceived as an, oh my gosh, this is going to be, this will be a nightmare to try to figure this out. And yet it's the cruise industry that's actually really, really experienced with viruses and keeping people safe and healthy on board. They're better at it than most, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely. I mean, we've never had a concern about health issues. When you think of all oh, the hotels we've stayed at or restaurants we eat at, I think the cruise lines do an amazing job. There's always someone cleaning. There's always someone maintaining the ship. Well, and th this begs the question, If, of course, you can always book a cruise directly with the cruise line, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are using travel advisors. And perhaps, you know, here we had World Travel Advisor Day or whatever it was just this past week you know, consumers now may want to look again at, at enlisting the help of an advisor, a qualified advisor who can say, I'm looking at the industry as a whole, not just one family of brands. Let me help you with where do you guys want to go and how can Cruise help you do that? Maybe now is the time to, to really look into using an advisor. 
Oh, we always recommend to have a cruise advisor. I mean, we still book with one most of the time for our trips that we book personally. So I, this is better time than ever because they can also walk you through all the different procedures are because they have improved cancellation policies. That's one thing I think many of the cruise lines are doing, recognizing that people are still uncertain. So giving you basically up to 48 hours before you cruise to at least get a cruise credit or a gift certificate. I think having a travel advisor now will let you know, well, this is what this cruise line is doing because most of them are going to be going to the same places and there are differences across brands, but also to ease people's concerns about, well, this is what this brand is known for. Here's what your protection policy would be. Here's this other brand. But yeah, I mean, we always recommend having a trial advisor, but I agree with you now is probably, if you've never had one before, it's definitely time to pick up the phone or go online and <laughs> find one. And find one. One of the videos we are taking a look at here and we've looked at here on this program is the, the 15 ways the cruise industry is going to be different or has, or is going to be forever changed based on this pandemic. What are the top three, in your opinion, that you're going to see almost immediately? Wow, top three. So, and of course, we have, again, no insider track, and this is from our experience, but I think the first one is definitely going to be, um, well, we've talked about all of this, but I think the first one's definitely going to be the boarding procedure. So they're going to be probably doing temperature checks when you get on board, probably at embarkation day, but also at the ports of call. And this is not just for passengers, but also for the crew and having an health screening questionnaire. So they always had a pretty short questionnaire, three or four questions about your health. Yeah, uh, I think they're gonna be a little bit more enhanced on that and which they should. So they're gonna definitely have a better screening process once before passengers get on board and they'll probably do that at every port of call, which they normally don't do. So that would be definitely the big one. The second one will be social distancing, I think on the ships. And that's gonna be the biggest logistical nightmare or at least the biggest issue that they're gonna have to deal with is how can we ensure that people have the same experience in the restaurants and entertainment venues, but also keep a safe distance. So that, that's gonna be more about timing and what do they do and when do they do it. And then I think the third will probably be, you'll be seeing staff at least initially probably wearing masks. And there might be a suggestion to have passengers wear a mask, which we would be all for. So if cruising were to open, late summer or the fall, and they said you needed to wear a mask before that. But I think you're going to see more of uh, those type of pr protocols be put in place by the crew. And there's already a lot of cleaning, hand washing, and proper sanitation on the ships. There'll be more of that kind of coincide. They'll have more hand sanitation stations throughout the place, and you'll see more staff regularly cleaning high traffic areas. So those would be probably the three things you'll see right away. Washy, washy. We hear washy, it washy, you know, yeah. Every deck. But, but it is true that some people that aren't familiar with how cruise ships work, and I'm talking about modern day cruise ships, even size is not really relevant here because the cruise industry has figured out that when they have these ships at capacity or close to capacity, that's one of the reasons we get our little daily thing. The activities are designed to disperse those passengers equally and distribute them throughout the ship in a normal environment. A lot of people, I'm sure you do, of course, and we know that the cruise lines do this so that not everybody shows up at the same spot all the time. Mm -hmm. So they're already thinking, along. again, I think the cruise industry is, is a lot more forward thinking than we give it credit for, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely, especially the media portrayal. So I think the media has this kind of archaic view of modern cruising, not too far from the movie Titanic, not the actual Titanic properly. Right. But even, even so, you're right. I mean, these, we go on the mega ships that have two, sometimes up to 5,000 passengers and a couple of thousand crews. So they're mini cities and little towns. And they do a good job of catering to all different types of tastes by offering those different type of activities, whether it's on the pool deck or trivia, or all these different things. But even so, if they're selling a, a uh, half capacity or less capacity, you still can't have too many people gathering around for some of the more popular events, like some of the entertainment at night or the pool deck stuff. So they will need to figure out how do we structure things. I think the one area we're really interested in seeing is kind of the dining room experience. Because that's one of the big things I think about cruising is eating. That's why I got this. But like, <laughs> you can't see it. That's a good thing about Zoom. But it's wonderful, um, isn't it? So we don't see the perfect. wide, we're good. But I do think, you know, that's one of the big experience people like, you, you know, we're not big fans of buffets, but people like the buffets or all the different restaurants. And how can you have that same experience when you have to have social distance and tables spread apart and still cater to even if it's a thousand people or 1500 people and do it in a timely manner. So they'll figure it out. Like you said, they're forward thinking. There's a lot of great technology on ships too. So they already had a lot of touchless types of things that probably will expand between Princess's Ocean Medallion and uh, Royal has their bands, kind of like the Disney bands where you can swipe. I expect to see more and more cruise lines having their version of that 
So it's less taking a card out, less transactions with your hands and less uh, touching of things. So we'll probably see that happen in a few months too. DB, thank you for this. I really appreciate you taking the time and, and you're always welcome. Oh, sure. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hey guys, this channel is a celebration of all things travel. So hit that subscribe button, leave a comment or question, share this video, like it, rate it, whatever. Believe me, it all helps. Thanks for watching.